What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today's video is on a 1969 Ford F-250. This vehicle features the 360 V8, but the theory that we're going to discuss applies to a variety of specifically timing chain operated with distributor engines. So V6, V8, Chevy, Ford, Dodge, doesn't matter. Um, we're just looking at timing chains and distributors. And the main thing I'm wanting to look for and show you how to discover for yourself is has your timing chain jumped or is there slop in it or essentially both. It can only jump if there is slop in it or if it broke. Um, so that's what we're looking for is how much slop is okay and how much slop is there in our timing chain. So the first thing you want to do is remove your uh, distributor cap so that you can get a clear view of the rotor. So we've done that, set it aside. You want to remove your number one spark plug. So on Ford, on the left, we've got one, two, three, four going back, five, six, seven, eight. And so our front left or front passenger cylinder is cylinder one. The next thing is looking down here at our timing pointer. You want to have a clear view of that and also have your zero degree mark on your balancer marked. So mine is not currently visible, it's on the other side of the rotation, but uh, you want to highlight that and have all of your before top dead center marks also visible. You don't need to highlight them, but just make sure that they're visible. So using a 15 16 socket on a breaker bar down here, we're going to turn the engine over until our cylinder one comes up. And so what I have is just a quarter inch extension in the hole there with my uh, cylinder one spark plug removed. And as I turn the engine, you can see that got slack and is going down. So the piston is going down right now. I'm going to remove this because I never like to leave something in the hole when the piston comes up in case it jams up and causes damage. But just enough to show me that the piston's going down right now. And we were just pointing at number one, so we know we're about 180 out. We just finished the exhaust stroke. <laughs> So we're continuing to turn the engine around by hand in a clockwise direction on a Ford or whichever, if you're working on a different vehicle, turn it in whichever the normal rotating direction of the engine is. And you can look that up or you can turn the key briefly and watch which way it turns. Continuing to turn here. I'm going to go ahead and pause until we get closer so that you don't need to endure this. <laughs> okay, we're getting close. Um, so I know that on this Ford, number one is kind of back and to the right, and I can see that the rotor is about to point to it. So we'll keep rotating. And now as we're getting real close, I'm going to watch down here for my highlighted zero degree timing mark to come up. You can see it there. I gotta reach over this way a second. This has a really annoying radiator cap on it. I need to get out of the way. All right, I'll give you a view of this as we go. We're coming up. And we want to leave that zero right on. There you go. So we're right on zero. And now we're going to shift our attention to the rotor. So looking at the rotor, I've got my eyes up here and I'm going to grab onto the breaker bar and we're going to go the opposite direction. So I was going clockwise, pushing down. Now I'm going to go counterclockwise and slowly move the engine in the opposite direction while watching the rotor. 
as soon as the rotor starts to move, there's going to be a period here where it doesn't move. What we're doing by rotating the opposite way is taking up the slack in the timing chain. So I'm going to watch this. I'm rotating. You can see I'm pulling on this. Watching, watching, watching. Hasn't moved yet. Hasn't moved. There. It just started to move, and so I stopped. Now, you can remove your breaker bar, and we're going to look at our results. So what we're looking for is we're going to go back down to our marks on the harmonic balancer, and there's not really a spec on this, but there's kind of a, a rule of thumb. Is anything less than 10 degrees before top dead center, anything less than a 10 degree reading is okay. Ideally, you'd be in about the five degree range, five degrees of slop, five to eight or so. If there's 10, it's probably okay. Anything more than 10 is gonna be an issue and a likely indication that the chain could have jumped. Or if it hasn't yet, that your chain is stretched and you should probably go ahead and put a timing set in this engine. So, I'm looking down here. It's hard to see without my light and my LED light is annoying on camera, but bear with me. All right, so I can see 20 degrees and then I can almost see 30. So this is really, really, really bad. <laughs> I would almost say catastrophic. I have nearly 30 or more degrees of slop in my timing chain. So it has certainly jumped at least once, maybe a hundred times, uh, and that's a big issue. Because of the condition of this engine, I'm gonna say it should just be replaced. It's been neglected so long that it's not worth disassembling and putting a timing set in, in my opinion. Um, but that just depends on a case-by-case -case basis. So hopefully the results here, uh, or this test, helps you out. If you have any questions, you can leave those in the comments down below. But basically the, the summary is, if you have less than 10 degrees of slop after performing this test, then you likely have another issue of some sort causing your no start. If you have more than 10 degrees, go ahead and put a timing set in based on the condition of your engine.